Hello and welcome to the Sun Racing preview of the Betway Solario Stakes. I'm Tom Bull and I'm joined by Callum Jameson. Hello Tom. And Jack Keane. Uh, that bully lad. All right, both of Sun Racing. Uh, but first up, we're going to talk about last week. We need to talk about York. And I think first up, we need to discuss what was really quite a shocking tip for all of us on Mab's cross on the ninth hole. Oh my God, she was outpaced after the first 50 yards, wasn't she? Never going a yard. I mean, that clearly wasn't her running, but we all had a bit bit of a mare there. We all wrote off Batash as well. I know, I said Batash got no chance. Callum called him slow, which I was I absolutely... Call him slow. <laughs> well, you Slower. did call him it's, it's on film, so we've, we've got the evidence. It's slow. on film, yeah. So, yeah, we had a bit of a mare there with Mabs, but... He's a really frustrating horse, isn't he, Batash? I he mean, is, he he's, really is. You, we take him on like that, and then he delivers probably a career best, one of the best performances, sprinting-wise, you'll see at York. And then I mean, it was amazing how different it was compared to his previous two performances in the race. Mm. I mean... I don't know whether it was on the other side of the track that helped him, but something helped him. It was just you know a different what? gear. In the King George, the two years before his flop, he'd been brilliant and stuffed the field by, what, five, six lengths? They said this time he wasn't fully wound up for that. They didn't punch him right out to the line. He won by like a length or so. Calm so down a bit. Just that you know, slightly easier preparation probably helped him on the nerves matter. But he was bloody impressive, wasn't he? He, what he really was. And I think they even talking about going possibly going to the Breeders' Cup with him at some point. I mean, I'd, uh, you wouldn't want to take him on there. Well, I mean, round the anyway, bend really. at Santa Anita on quick ground. I mean, for all of us, I think he was undoubtedly the highlight of the week. And Mabs crossed off to the low light. Ebor, Mr. Gia, pretty, pretty good winner of that race. I was quite happy with Red Galileo finishing second. Uh, obviously, didn't quite get the win, but... About the only <laughs> thing he got right all week. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty... Oh, no, to be fair, you did tip up Japan. <laughs> well, that's true, yeah. Good but yeah, Kieran time. Fallon showcasing his, his talents once again. Yeah. Brilliant £5 claimer. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it was, wasn't the best tipping-wise, but it was still... It's a good week, tricky yeah. punting on that, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. A few punting woes. Indeed. No Moving on now to the Betway Solario Stakes, Saturday's highlight at Sandown. A Group 3 over 7 furlongs. Clive Cox's positive heads the market here. He was second to Pinatubu last time out, a very impressive winner in the vintage stakes. He finished five lengths clear of a very good horse in Lope E. Fernandez and looks well worth his place at the head of the market here. Uh, he's taking on a bunch of unexposed colts, including Alsu Hale, who's uh, looking to follow up his week, his win in a week race last time at Yama for Godolphin. Uh, Visinari, who's trying to get his career back on track. Uh, a bunch of others, including Kameko, Ashasi, Hector Loza and Full Verse. Chaps, what do we think about this? I mean, positive evidence to the market, isn't he? Very uh, encouraging run behind the top class, Pinatubo at Goodwood. Um, he bolted up at Salisbury on his debut. I mean, he's clearly got a big engine. My slight worry is, I mean, he's very short now, and it's, I don't know whether it's just a case of him picking up the pieces in the, at Goodwood, you know, kind of. He, he did was held stay up. on late, didn't he? And it yeah, was, yeah, but I mean, then again, I, I've watched it back a few times, and he was kind of launching his challenge at a similar time to Lope Fernandez, and he just left him, left left him, him trailing. And, that, and that, is so a good, that is a good horse in his own right. It is, he is forget. a good horse. I mean, I think Pinatubo is just a monster, is and a I mean, monster. this lad's clearly got loads of ability. I mean, he is short, and he's up against some unexposed ones here. But, I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing him. He's progressive, and Clive Cox thinks the world of him, doesn't he? So He does indeed, yeah. Interesting that Charlie Appleby's running Alsu Hale. Uh, obviously, mm. training Pinatubo as well is going to have a pretty good line into that form. Mm. And he's quite short in the market for what he's done so far. I mean, he won a very, very weak race last time at Yarmouth, and he won to six to win that. Mm. Um, what are your thoughts, Callum? On I went through this a few times trying to take on positive um, and in the end I came down that I can't take him on I probably side really? with him to be honest even though as Jack said he is fairly short here rather unoriginally un I side with him I think that run behind Pinatubo is likely to be champion two year old come the end of the season yeah, or something I burst I, I, through yeah, at Newmarket or something like that like like you said he, did he pick up the pieces or not I don't think he did the way he sort of travelled I think he was actually a bit too far back and when um, Pinatubo did take off the way he did he actually came through quite a few in the field I think and like you said he did burn off Lopi yeah, best, Hernandez best of the rest, he's, he's he? a best good horse in his own right and then when you have like Elsa Hale just below him in the market like you said just off the back of that Yarmouth win I don't even think he had to improve no, I agree. off his debut yeah. run to win that um, the only worry I think with positive is that he he hasn't actually had much of a battle yet like you said his Salisbury win was very run of the mill he's backed off the boards that day which is a good sign mm. but at Goodwood he sort of just came through, didn't actually have to battle much and just came through second on his own. Mm. Like Sandown up that hill, he's going to have a fight, which is the only worry. I don't particularly like siding with horses like that. But I don't think it's the strongest Solara. And I think even if he runs quite similar to that Goodwood run, I think he might win that. I was about to say it. exactly the same thing. I think if he, if he runs to that Goodwood, he might even have to improve to win. Um, we should quickly touch on Visionari. I'm quite keen on Visionari, to be honest. Are with you? you? Well, I, well, this this is do or die for this one. Oh, now. why? I, was so I thought it was do or die last time. To be well, I, I, I can give him a pass. <coughs> it, he was so impressive. I mean, everyone's talked about his performance on debut, the length of his stride, the time he clocked. 
I mean, there was a lot of hype there. You could, I could forgive the new market run. Prost B, too sharp a trip. Goodwood, I don't think, is his track. They obviously went off from the front, which is kind of, you know, he's quite a free racing horse. They just let him go. But he's got, he's like a bloody giraffe, isn't he? He's got such a big stride. He does. And Sandown is a track that suits front runners. And if Ryan Moore can just get him into a nice rhythm on the, on the front, and he can use that stride and wind him up at the bottom of the hill and just kind of get the others off the bridle. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me just gallops and gallops and gallops and just gallops them into the ground. And now onto the first of our sun racing talking points. I'm going to grab a little talking point out of the bowl <laughs> to have a little <laughs> rummage around for the lads to have a debate about. Uh, we've got, does Enable win the arc? Well, that's quite topical, isn't it? <laughs> Very <laughs> topical. Good, I actually, good timing. Yeah, I actually wrote a, uh, a piece that caused some consternation I'll, I'll say amongst much with much of the racing ranks yesterday about Enable's going to win the arc I mean I think Enable will not win the arc uh, I think Sotsas in Japan three-year-olds are very much very much the ones to beat here I think she's going to find them too tough to handle I think Japan possibly more than Sotsas I'm a big fan of his after his superb job Mont, job Mont win uh, considering he's going to be better I think uh, over over a longer distance as he showed in the Grand Prix de Paris over one mile four uh, this, this is a very improving horse for Aidan O'Brien I think he's in receipt of weight uh, from Enable He's very much the one to beat in the race. Uh, what do we think? Of, what do we think of that, lads? I personally think Enable will win the arc fairly easily. Um, I think you're bang on with the horses that are the dangers to Enable, like you said, Japan and Sotsas. Um, whether I think they're quite good enough to beat Enable, I'm not sure. Sotsas completely unexposed. No idea how good he'll be. He yet. could. He the could French be form's always a bit iffy. Yeah. Um, I, I think there's some bits I'd like to pick you up on. I know Jack's going to go probably talk about yeah. Trev, who he got on his high horse. About Chomping at a bit. Um, <laughs> and then the other bit I think I'd pick you up on in that piece is where you said she's facing two of the best Yes, yeah, so that was picked up so by far. quite a few people, actually. Um, and you said that Sea of Class obviously won. I can give you that. We'll never really know, I guess, sadly. Oh, right, okay. um, and then you said Japan and Sotsas are the next two in line, the best horses she'd be. I think you're doing a huge disservice to the likes of Ulysses. Um, even magical in there. You well, I mean, say. you're basically judging. You're calling Japan one of the best horses in the world now off the back of one performance. And well, I have to say, Chris Lotion well, getting say weight when that, the race worked out perfectly. For I think him. your journalistic I'm, license went a bit far. Journalistic without. license to extent, but part <laughs> of that was based a little bit on potential and what they've got to come. But that's mm. the difference. Well, yeah. to an extent, but you can also read into it a little bit. I mean, Ulysses was rated, I think, one two six. Uh, at the end of his career, and I, I think yeah, I don't think he ever got higher than that actually. And uh, Japan's already rated one two two, and he's getting weight, so you could put him around the same mark. And with the potential to come, and if you look through enable the horses that enables beaten, she's beaten a lot of very good horses, but she's not beaten any really any superstars. She's beaten anyone she's beaten she can. She's beaten anyone she can. I mean, she's beaten Sea of Class, but I mean, we won't go into that. Sea of Class should have beaten her. Won. Uh, but I mean, I, I stand by what I say. Sotsas. It's very much. <laughs> well, <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, exactly. It's not sass. He's, he's got it. Don't I let mean, the trolls get to you. No, I know. I know. Well, I haven't been. But, um, no. Yeah, yeah. I thought it's. I thought it's French Derby win. Superb. Really visually, very impressive. The time backs it up. I mean, he beat Persian King, and I think and Persian King. A lot of people saying he didn't. He didn't stay that. I just thought he got done by a better turn of foot. Uh, the fact that Jean Claude Rouge has kept him off the track until the Prenial suggests that the arc is that a good the thing? Arc, though? Do you I think not it's think a very they good. They could thing. have picked another good race up. I'm quite happy with that. To be honest, I think the arc. I love the going there. Yeah, Pretty a lot. Fresh. It's a very patient approach. The other thing, he's he's worthy of. The, if he's going to run a big race, and, and and hopefully he'll win the Niel. If he doesn't, then we all got a bit yeah. of a problem. But bully, how can you say Trev is better <laughs> than Niel? Trev. Potted round at Longchamp and Saint Clou on soft ground, potted beating round. <laughs> yeah, potted round, potted round in small fields, just beating inferiors. She peaked once a year in one race. Enable goes at any track, any ground, now, any this trip. Is, this is an interesting. Just because she doesn't win by five, six lengths every time, she's a wily old mare, as I've said, as before. You said before. She looks after herself. Times. She has been brilliant in the past, but now she's getting older and wiser. She just doesn't have to do too much. She just does enough to win and. For me, there is absolutely no way you can say that Trev's enables is one than Enable. an eclipse on rattling quick ground, like we said, and a King George <coughs> on bottomless ground. Now, Trev needed saying she needed everything in her favour is a stretch too far, but you've only got to look at her records. So. I think there are two. I have to say, I think there are two different arguments here. I think you're saying that Enable. We're only replying to. No, it's fair. Yeah, I think I think Enable. I would I would 100% agree with you. Is the more durable, the more consistent of the two. Uh, but if you had to do, if you had to race peak Enable against peak Trev under conditions that were ideal for both which i think was probably around good to soft good ground to soft. Uh, in the arc i think at longchamp i think i think trev would have so it. in trev's back backyard well in trev's backyard but just in almost trev's backyard she's won two as well look i just i i think that enable 
is just so she's so masculine and powerful. She's like a cult. She's like an entire. She just she destroys horses. I w I, again, I and wouldn't I just, disagree. And I just feel that Trev, you know, she there's an, undeniably she was brilliant in those two arc wins. You you can't deny that. But I mean, I feel like the sign of a true champion is the ability to cope with a load of wide variety of conditions over a wide variety of trips against all different types of horses. We're not quite agreeing in general, <laughs> but it's a good thing. That's, a good, That's thing. a good thing, yeah. Lovely stuff. Moving on now to the Betway Atalanta Stakes, the Group 3 race for Phillies. Sir Michael Stout's Jubiloso heads to the market here, bidding to make up for an incredibly unlucky performance at Goodwood last time out, where she found a horrible passage throughout the race, but flew late to finish third under Ryan Moore. She's taking on June Flower, a very impressive winner in listed company last time out, who takes another step up in grade here. A uh, look around and a smattering of others. Callum, let's, let's, let's start with Jubilosa. I mean, she's, yep. she's got the, by far the best form in the book, isn't she? Yeah, yeah I mean, she should win this. Um, you have to give her another chance off that Goodwood run. Everyone knows he can get stupidly unlucky at Goodwood. Ryan Moore got a bit of stick after that. Not necessarily all his fault. The less um, said about that ride, the better. <laughs> it's it's a shocker. So. We'll move on. Um, but as ridiculous as it sounds, she did do quite well to get up so close for third. She, the yep. way she flew, you only have to watch it back. She picked up a lot of lengths in a short space of time, which suggests she is a good horse. There was talk of her being the best three-year-old filly in Britain before that. And I mean, if you can't win a group three, that's probably a bit windy as well. Yeah, this, I would say that. I mean, it's her time really, isn't it? Um, I mean, I'm not sure I'll be backing her at the prices, but I hope she wins this. and Because she can figure in some better races, I think. Oh, absolutely. The end of the as, season, as you saw yeah. in the coronation stakes, we'll ask it. Mm. Jack, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I agree. I mean, she's got the best form. She's a very exciting prospect. Should have won at Goodwood. I mean, after two runs in minor races, to then finish third in the coronation was a massive run. So she's clearly a very the nice horse. The only thing that coronation, bred. the form has taken a few little knocks. Most has been, yeah. was terrible at Goodwood. Yeah, she mm. was, wasn't she? And the, the winner. Watch me got beat as well. But yeah. I still, the yeah. point still stands, still far. Still a massive run. Far, yeah. June Flower showed real gears to win uh, the listed race at Ascot. I think she's quite a nice prospect. For me, I think the value in the race could lie with Amanda Peretz. <laughs> Lavender's, Lavender's blue. Lavender's blue. Lavender's Not something blue. you say every day. No, absolutely <laughs> not. Well, I'm, I'm still very confident that this filly's got a bright future. She was imperious on debut at Newmarket. She was one of the yeah. performers of the meeting that, that day. She was so, so good. Um, she probably should have won at Newbury in a listed race. She hit the front a bit soon and was just picked off. As she had the subsequent Irish Oaks winner back in third. I mean, she's improved leaps and bounds since then, but still, I mean, Nice to see the form work out Absolutely, well. Absolutely, yeah. And then the Oaks, she was a bit keen. No one really wanted to go on early. She found herself in front and it was just game over, turning turning around Tatton Corner. Yeah, so She went too far too quickly then. Exactly. I mean, she comes in nice and fresh. I actually think a stiff mile, she's quite stoutly bred, but a stiff mile I think will actually be fine for her because she's a strong traveller. I think she's a really nice filly and I, I think the best is yet to come from her. So I'm really, really looking forward to seeing her back, actually. Lovely stuff. I, I mean, for me, June Flower is only got five pounds now to make up because she went up a stone for that win at Ascot last time. Only got five pounds to make up on Jupiloso, which isn't a huge amount if she does show a lot more progression again. I mean, she'll need to improve, obviously, to, to trouble her. But, you know, I mean, she is improving. She's with John Gosden. And you can see her putting it up to Jubiloso. I mean, I don't think she'll probably be good enough to beat her. Particularly as Jubiloso herself has got more to come. But, it, you know, she's she, not without a she's chance. She's the obvious danger and you've got to respect her. But I think John Gosden did hint after the Ascot race, so that's probably about as good about as she is. Level, yeah. And if that's as good as she is, I think Jubiloso yeah. will be okay. No, but I, she's I definitely the danger, yeah. yeah. Jubiloso wants to beat, 100%. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah, Jubiloso positive double, that'd be, uh, that's, the, that's the way I'm thinking anyway. Jubiloso oh, and positive? I'm a single man only. <laughs> <laughs> and Jack, you're... Lavender's you're blue each Lavender's way. blue each way, lovely. Yeah. So Lavender's blue and Vicinari for you. Yeah. Both the big races. I mean, I, it's, there's a few four-year-olds in here, I couldn't give them a sniff. Yeah. I mean, you've got to give weight to the likes of Jubiloso. Um, and they're, and they're rated them. a long way below as well. Mm. So. Yeah, I think they'll struggle to give weight to up-and-coming horses like that. If you're still rooting around for a Group 3 at this time of your four-year-old career, I think you're very much exposed to a no, horse like Jubilosa. Completely agree. Now, on to the second of our Sun Racing talking points. <laughs> Callum, I'm going to get you to do the honours this time. Well, thank you very much. No problemo. No looking. Ah, Mum's Tipple. Mum's so, Tipple. So, would we take... Three million for Mum's tip. I mean, that's off the back of Trapman's snippet he got that there's the bids are flying in for Mum's tipple off the back of her York win. There's rumours of three million. A huge amount of money. I think we'll, mm. we'll uh, all agree. But I mean, he was extraordinarily impressive. The the speed guys are purring over that performance. <laughs> and yeah, I were. mean, it was 
really, you watch it, it was something quite special. I mean, halfway she, he had the race won, and you thought, blimey, how, how far clear is he going to go? And he went 11 lengths clear in the end at the line, hit the line running, made some actually quite decent horses look incredibly slow. Uh, better time than the gym crack at the same meeting. I mean, he's obviously a very classy horse. Is he worth the money? That's the question. It was arguably the two-year-old performance of the season, to be Absolutely. honest. Absolutely. I mean, I love Pinatubo, but this thing was jaw-dropping, wasn't it? It really was. I mean, the, the problem is, three million, it's a huge amount of money. But just the way the game is going now, if you show any form of brilliance as a two-year-old, breeders and owners, they just want a precocious horse, you know, because that's all where all the money's going these days. All the stallions, are pe you're seeing horses being retired at two. Good middle-distance horses like Poets World are now jump stallions. So, I mean, it's just... Just the way the game's going, it's quite sad. But I mean, if I was an owner, I would rip your hand off for that. Yeah, there's two oh, questions in there. It's yeah. whether we take three million or whether they take three million. Three million, I don't know the owners from Adam. They might, it might not be much money to them. Well, apparently they buy a new horse every Christmas. So yeah, they did hear that. So I mean, <laughs> another can buy lots of horses. I mean, it's, a, it's a lot of money, but they're ne uh, they've had good horses in those colours. They've never had horses that are guaranteed Group no. One class already uh, on his second start. So, and of course, the other thing to think about is. I know it's only his second start, but he might not ever get to that level again. You don't know, and mm. it, is, it is a gamble. Well, Hannon's adamant he'll win a Group 1, and I mean, on that... He's going to be there, isn't he? I mean, he will win a Group 1. Hannon, I'll be shocked. Absolutely on that evidence. He's shocked. But you just don't know if it was a bit of a fluke, maybe. I mean, you, mm. you've I only got backed up on the figures, but... You've only got to look at Vizanar at the end of the season. I mean, he's still obviously likely raced, but I mean, I'm sure there were people interested in a horse like that after he won yeah, on but debut. And then, like... Makes you think how much money was put in for the likes of Dark Vision when he went to Godolphin and things like Absolutely. that. Absolutely, but this thing blew them away. It did, but then it you've got to, you've got to mad. think it did get an easy lead. Oh, oh come on, no. I mean, no, I'm just I'm trying to find I'm trying to find holes in it, but I mean, at the no. end of the day, I would absolutely take three million for it. the ball just, and <laughs> That's just the way the game's going now, isn't it, lads? Yeah, absolutely. three million is pocket change for the ball. Wow, well, not quite, <laughs> but uh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> found that by the ducky back of your sofa, <laughs> wouldn't you, buddy, lad? <laughs> Um, cool, I think we're all in agreement that we take, we bite the hand off, wouldn't we, for, for that yeah. Is he worth it? In this market, yes, in my opinion. In the market, <laughs> yes. Is he going to be worth it in the future? No. Elsewhere on the afternoon, we've got the Beverly Bullet and a couple of pretty decent handicaps elsewhere as well. Guys, have got any other fancies, Callum? Where are you? Um, I quite like Migration in the big Betway handicap, 225 at Sandown. Um, I think he just wins as given a clear run round. I mean, there's a not a massive field been cool. declared. Um, he won convincingly over course and distance last time, stepped up in trip. I think this this track really suits. The ground's going to be in his favour. He's been chucked up six pounds for that, but I don't think that will stop him. You give him a rating much higher than that, I think, in my book. Gets plenty of weight from the older horse. He's only off eight, seven here. Um, he's been brought along very steadily by David Menuzier, our favourite Frenchman in the sum racing more town. More of an impression. <laughs> more impression. Oh, mais oui, deadly Dave. Uh, <laughs> <my British>. Deadly Dave. <laughs> And I just think this bigger field is going to suit him. He's the kind of horse who I think is going to improve the better horses he faces. The first time he's going to run against four-year-olds, I think he'll kick on again. Here. Excellent. Jack, what about you? Uh, Silver Cup at Beverly. Yeah. I quite like Good Birthday. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's got some smart form to his name. He's beaten around a length by Headman in that London Gold Cup early in the season. Didn't stay a mile and a half at Royal Ascot. Was fifth in a really strong race at Newmarket in the July Festival. Just behind uh, Dark Vision, who reopposes. But I think this lad's still got a bit more improvement to come. So... He's been freshened up and he takes a big drop in grade, so good birth, Dave. He's the, yeah, I mean, he's the one I fear because I quite like Desert Icon in that race. He was second last time, so I think he's a very progressive horse called Waldster and very well bred for John Golston. Uh, he ran a big race there, finished a long way clear of the third victory chime, who actually won at Epsom this week. Um, this is a bit of an easier race for the good birthday if he's on song as a class horse, but I think for William Haggis, he's going to take a lot of beating. I also like Ornate and the Beverly Bullet. Uh, He's a very, very, very <laughs> fast horse over five furlongs. It's quite a quick five furlongs. Uh, he was outclassed in the Nunthorpe last time, but obviously behind Patash. Um, but I think if the Stewards Cup had been over five furlongs, he would have won that. He is rapid. He is very quick. He ran and, well as well. And he ran really before, well yeah. Yeah, in the King George behind behind Batash. If he gets out there and kicking early, it'd be hard to peg back. Yeah. He will be, yeah. And, and particularly take cover, obviously, out the same stable. The same stable, race, yeah. yeah. And he won at Beverly earlier in the season in a decent looking conditions race. So I think, you know. Billy's been looking at the four, hasn't he? Makes a change. <laughs> Brilliant. And um, this this rapid speedster is going to be the one to beat in that. Um, but it's it's a decent looking race. And um, yeah, but what about your uh, your best bet then of the afternoon? Oh, I'll go good birthday at Beverly. Great. I think I'd come down on migration, but I do think positive will win as well. I'm going to go with ornate. Great. Thanks very much, Callum. Thanks very much, Jack. That's the end of Thanks, our Tom. latest sun racing preview in association with Betway. And best of luck for the weekend.